All right, I get a lot of questions about performance in Premiere Pro, and it's usually from somebody with a lower powered laptop. So I wanted to show you the minimum setup. I have my wife's uh, MacBook Air that I borrowed here, and the equivalent over here would be something like the Lenovo Yoga, which is, they're both SSD drives. They're both small, they're both, um, underpowered uh, systems, but they can still do a good job. And the first place to look that you can make a difference is disk speed. And I can just tell by the questions that I get that people are using the drive inside the computer, the main drive, the Macintosh HD over here, or the C drive over there. And even worse, the desktop to throw everything on. That's the worst place to go. If you get an inexpensive drive, and we're actually, I'm gonna show you what we're connected to here. This thing has had the heck beat out of it. This is just a cheap uh, $15 case with an SSD in it. I'm just, I happen to have um, an extra 160 gigabyte SSD hanging around. So it, it's definitely not the biggest, but you know what? It makes sense for just putting your work files on. So it can be the, your performance drive. You move your, your editing files over there, you do your editing, um, and then move them off and archive them somewhere else. You don't necessarily have to have giant, fast, big. Um, here's the next thing that's important is, a lot of people will, will think that these uh, Western Digital Ultra Passport drives are, uh, um, useful and they're attractive. They're big. You can get these in, in one and two terabytes really, really cheap. The problem is they're usually slow. The cheaper ones are 5,400 RPMs. 5,400 RPM is only good for archiving. You've finished your job, you move it on to that external uh, two terabyte backup. It can't be used as your regular drive. Most of these inexpensive laptops that are out there are all 5,400. In fact, even some of the pro drives that actually have a second drive, a lot of them are big, but again, they're, they're 5,400. You need 7,200. 200 RPM. And there's a really good tool to test this, Disk Speed Test by Blackmagic Design. I'll put a link in the description. It's actually an app on, on the Mac uh, that you can download and um, you'd have to install the whole Blackmagic thing on Windows, but it's the same application. You basically pick the drive, you pick the target drive to test. So I'm going to test the SSD media drive that I've got here and click Start Test. It'll show you the read and write speed. So right now it's telling me the write speed is around 100 megabytes per second and the read speed is 245 mega bytes per second. These are not in bits. So we can stop the test now. You can see down at the bottom where it's showing you what you could run on here, how fast this is. All right, so that's great. Now, if when you try this on a big old 45, 5400 RPM drive, you'll find that it's, it's gonna just be a dog and it won't give you, uh, it, if it's really slow, you won't get any of those green check marks. Okay, the next part that, that you probably don't have control over is RAM. So disk speed, RAM. That's the second one. And Premiere Pro likes to have a lot of RAM. And um, you know, there, there is a, a limited amount of RAM in, in this. There's only four gigabytes of, of memory in this MacBook Air, uh, which isn't a heck of a lot. So this is the uh, early 2015 13-inch 1.6 Intel Core i5. My Yoga over here actually has a Core i7. It's a, it's a little bit older of a machine, but it does have a Core i7. So it's going to do a lot more. Okay, so right after disk speed is CPU. The CPU is used for any type of calculation that is not GPU accelerated. We'll get to GPU in a second. Um, so it has to be used especially for compressed video. So if you're shooting on a DSLR, which this one over here is a DSLR, that's my Canon 5D Mark III, that has, um, a lot of compression. My Blackmagic Cinema, I'm recording on ProRes, which are bigger files, but less compressed. And those bigger files are actually easier to play on the MacBook Air than the, the 5D. That being said, let's look over here at what I've got on the timeline. 
And I want to show you that you can turn on the dropped frame indicator. That's this green dot right here. And I'm playing back some HD video and you can see I'm not dropping any frames and I, I put a cheesy title in here just to have an overlay on top of things. And this is, you know, this is full HD playback. Looks fantastic. Uh, it's playing, it's not dropping frames. Not a very complicated timeline, but we are playing this from the external SSD. Now, I want to show you that as soon as I turn on an adjustment layer that has a Lumetri effect, watch this. Okay, boom, there we go. There's the LUT and right away we're starting to drop frames. So we drop five frames just like that. Why? Well, even though this is using OpenCL, there's not enough power in the GPU to really give Lumetri or any GPU accelerated effects any help. It's useless in the MacBook Air. Not gonna happen. Over here on, on the um, Lenovo, same thing. GPU, is it's just not there for both of these. It's gotta be, you, you can only expect GPU acceleration in higher end machines. So the CPU, is, it will be taxed um, and also the uh, disc, but right next to the CPU is RAM. Every single time you touch the playhead, Premiere Pro is going to load as many frames as it can into RAM to give you a smooth playback. So when you're scrubbing along, how does it scrub so easily or not so easily? By the amount of RAM. The more RAM you've got, the more Premiere Pro is going to just stuff into RAM so that it's as fluid as possible. And if you're like most editors, you grab the playhead and then it's over here and then it's over here and you're moved over here. The program is trying to First of all, read the video files, so it has to read them from the disk, then it has to decompress them if they're highly compressed, then it has to stick them in the RAM, and if there's not enough RAM, it's gotta write that back to the disk. So if you're wondering why things are slow, it's because you're probably pushing your system too far. HD on this MacBook Air, on a simple timeline, it's gonna look pretty good. You can also turn this down right here. So right now I can only go to a quarter res, but if I found that, that um, I was dropping too many frames, I could turn this down to a quarter uh, or a half resolution. And this doesn't affect the output, it's just the playback is at a, uh, a, a little bit less of a res uh, resolution. But it can help, especially if you've got uh, too much stuff happening there. The, the last thing I wanna leave you with is, and that's importing your, um, I've got a, a simple USB 3. Uh, this is a StarTech uh, with an incredibly long, annoying cable. But this is a StarTech uh, card reader, CF card reader, SD multi uh, card reader. You need to make sure that you bring your clips in to the computer. I know that sounds obvious to a lot of people, but I get that question too. I imported my stuff and then it's not there anymore. You're not importing. Those clips right there, Let's just go over and have a look. This clip right here, if I look at this clip, if I reveal this in the finder, that's where that clip is. The clip is not imported into the program. It's simply linked to that. I know that's obvious to some folks, but to new editors, they're not there. Um, one other thing is the GTEC drives. If you're looking for a really good quality drive and not just a drive, but a, a, a RAID, um, they make them, this isn't a RAID, this is, is, this is just a, a USB 3 drive. But look, I'll have a link in the, in the um, description. GTEC, they're more of a, a premium quality, but they do make small USB 3 drives that are RAID. Now, of course, if you've got Thunderbolt, I could be hooking up. I don't have a Thunderbolt drive hooked up to this MacBook Air. I could be using this. I can't use it on my Lenovo, but I could be using it here. And as um, devices get more updated and hardware starts to support Thunderbolt 3 with USB-C type connectors, wow, then things are really, really gonna be fast. But remember, with that speed, that only means that you've eliminated one bottleneck disk speed. Doesn't mean you've, you've uh, eliminated the RAM and CPU. So 
Just work within your means. You're not going to turn something like this or something like this into something like my Z-Book over there or my Dell over there. The 5520, that is an absolute monster when it comes. I mean, those are, are mobile workstations and they can really crank out the equivalent of many desktops. But on uh, on a budget, as we're showing here, a simple US, oh, by the way, this, this USB drive, the case, that I mentioned, it was like 15 bucks. You can go to Amazon and get a 120 SSD for about $44 right now. Smaller projects, your working drive, that's gonna be fine. All right, good luck to everyone out there. Hopefully now you know you need, oh, you know what? I did almost forget one thing. The cache, if we go into the preferences, it's in the Premiere Pro menu, it's in uh, on the Mac, it's in the edit menu on Windows, and we go to media. Right now I don't have this uh, hooked up, but I could uh, plug this in and, and set this up to a, a separate drive. Notice how it's just in the user's library uh, drive right now. This is where the media cache files go. It, again, a cheap, a secondary drive or a third drive, secondary drive, internal, secondary, and third drive just for the cache. Again, it doesn't have to be large. 120 gigs is, is fine. 256 is better, but it doesn't have to be like a giant terabyte drive. That media cache will help you in Premiere Pro somewhat, um, media encoder somewhat, um, uh, audition. It really helps in uh, After Effects. All right. So there you go. There's your editing on a budget. Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us a little more, join us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, it's my job here at Video Revealed to get you performing the best you can.